and happy Sunday. It's Kelly with ifyouhaveanegg.com and today is Sunday, March the 1st. Even though I've said it was March the 2nd almost all day long because apparently I forgot that it was leap year. But y'all had an extra day yesterday. I want to know what everybody did with their extra day of the year because we don't get another extra day for four more years. Yeah, and they had a lot of news about that yesterday about why we had, you know, why we have leap year I and mean, extra leap days. But today is Sunday, March the first Kelly it's March the first not March the second March the first and this is Kelly with if you have an egg.com this is chat number 163 and it is titled make activity stick and I swear I did not know that this was the topic for this week when we did last week's games on activity in the extra credit portion I promise I didn't know hello Melissa and we're gonna start saying our highs and hellos and if you are watching this later on youtube.com search if you have an egg hello Marlene and if you don't want to see the highs and hellos just go ahead and grab that little button, drag it on over to about 10 minutes, and we'll be um, wrapped up by then. Hello, Mary Ann. Hello, Trish. Uh-oh, Trish says it's raining in California. And I think you're sitting it our way, except I guess it's somebody in West Knoxville sitting it our, or West Tennessee sitting it our way because it's supposed to be raining here again tomorrow. But it was not raining today. Hooray! Hello, Sandra from Dingman's Ferry. Hello, Carol Lou. Spent the, ba ba the day babysitting the peanut. Yay for peanut babysitting. Hello, Claudie. Hello, Andrea. Hello, Rosie. Hi, my Christy. But yeah, so if you're here with us live, hey and hello. Um, we would love to say hello back. If you are brand new, let us know. Hello, Evie. And hi, Alicia. If you're brand new, let us know because we would love to welcome you. Hello, Roberta. Um, everybody likes to say hello to the new people. And if, again, if you're watching it later, if you're watching it on the blog, um, because Jessica has started posting those now, and she actually does a better job of transcribing what I said than I do. And I'm the person who said it. Anyway, it's crazy, but aloha, Kathy. Hello, Johnny. Um, or Joni, Joni, Johnny, Joni, Johnny. I don't know. You'll have to let me know. And Karen at Popcorn Karen is here, and she made some cauliflower fried rice today. And she's hostessing her own little contest over on the um, If You Have an Egg page, so you'll have to go check that out. Oh, and Sandra says, show us your nails. Love the color. It is literally just one of the ones that's tips. So it's just sparkles today. And Casey will have to tell us what color it is because I don't have any idea. Hello, Mary, and hello, Debbie from Orlando. So it's, I don't know, some kind of sparkle tip. So that was what I wanted today. I wanted something, I don't know, clean. Because I'm getting ready to do the St. Patty's Day nails, and I'm super excited about those. And hello, Sue from New Zealand. So it's already tomorrow. So for Sue, it is March the 2nd. So I could, if I accidentally say it's March the 2nd, I'm just talking to Sue. Mm -hmm. Hello, Lynn. So these are the ones that I'm doing for next week. So I'm gonna have all the all the luck of the Irish next week. And hello, Teresa from Kentucky. Hello, Kim. So anybody new, go ahead and say hi, hello. Hello, Divine, I'm good, how are you? So how is your foot, knee, whatever it was doing? Yeah, it was good to see you that you were out of your boot and up, ended up running around. Hello, Audrey, hello, uh, Sherry from Connecticut. Hello, Irma. So I hope everybody had a great week. Um, we made a lot of food this afternoon. Hello, Vicki. And I told John, I said, so pretty much like, so that's Joni. Okay, so Joni, like Joni, like Joni loves Chachi. Is it pronounced that way? I hope so. And I'll probably still get it wrong. Uh, let's see. Oh, April said, just wanted to say hi, heading to bed soon. She's got work early tomorrow. Yeah, me too. Well, no, I don't have work tomorrow. I have a list tomorrow, but I still have to get up at 3.30. Anyway, so I made like four different things um, for the chat tonight. So I told John, you know, whatever you want, just, you know, dig out of one of the bowls because we have four different things, but it is so, but yeah, divine, it's your, it's divine's foot. Yeah, good. I'm so, I'm so glad that it is so much better. I see that you've been up and running around. So that is awesome. Um, but we made four different things for the second half. So y'all have to patiently wait for that. Um, but it, we have all the smells going on here. So I made four distinctly different things for the second half. So we got some, some interesting smells going on um, in the kitchen and I got a little toasty. So if I get a little toasty, y'all just have to excuse me when I, um, you know, kind of cool off a little bit. So hello, Sandy and hello, Joyce. Let's get started today again. Sunday, Sunday, March the 1st, the 1st, except for Sue, and it is March the 2nd for Sue. Uh-oh, and Carol's already got it freezing up on her. So sorry, and hello, Kimberly. Um, 
but it's already March the 2nd for Sue. For the rest of us, it is March the 1st. And if you're watching this with us here live, hey, hello. Be sure and give us a shout out, especially if you're new. Hello, Stacy, and hello, Loretta. And if you're watching this later on Facebook or if you're watching it on YouTube, again, it's just youtube.com. Search if you have an egg, please still say hello. Hello, Mary from Canada. We had um, quite a few people from out of the country this week say hello, which was kind of cool. Um, I love to watch and see, um, you know, when people from other uh, from other countries, because WW is in, I want to say it's like, I looked it up one time, it's like 60 different countries. So we're in the United States. Um, we're very friendly with people from Canada. So, you know, in my mind, in my little, you know, sheltered, you know, life, I think of, you know, WW is only being in the United States and Canada, but it's in like, I swear, I think it was like 50 or 60 different countries. Hello, Michelle. Um, hello, Patty. So good to see you all. So this week, chat number 163, 163. We're like kicking it through this year already again and is making activity stick. And again, I swear, I didn't know that this was the topic for this week when we did our little exercise activities last week. So before we get into the meat and potatoes of this, and we didn't make any meat and potatoes tonight, but before we get into the meat and potatoes of this, who did some of the little activities from last week? There's no extra Bravo stickers for that because that wasn't part of your homework, but who did from the extra credit? So who did any of the, you know, like the countertop push-ups? You know, who did some of those? I saw some people doing, who was it that has a toothbrush that runs for like two minutes and they were doing squats while they were brushing their teeth for two minutes. First of all, my arm would have already fallen off, you know, from doing this, you know, while I was doing my squats and two minutes. Yeah, and Lynn did hers, good job, yay. Yay, so I tried to add some new ones. So I was doing the toothbrushing you know, I was doing the toothbrushing while doing squats, but I had to switch hands, you know. I had to switch hands halfway through. And Rosie did some calf raises. Yeah, so y'all did some good y'all did some good exercises. I saw some good ones. So first though, who sat their bottom in a little chair last week? So who sat your bottom in a chair and attended a physical workshop? Um, give me a oh and Michelle did her arms with cans every morning. That's awesome. Good, good, good. Can you feel it? Can you feel it yet? So give me some thumbs ups if you attended um, a live workshop last week. So if you actually sat your bottom in a chair, give me some thumbs ups. If you attended here with us last week, um, live with us last week, or if you did both, let's see some hearts. Yeah, so Sandra did both. Hello, Betty. I'm seeing lots of thumbs ups. So a lot of y'all sat your bottoms in chairs. I did, I did last week. Joyce did both. She's got thumbs ups and hearts. Lynn did both, wow. Y'all are doing a good job. Yep, and now I'm seeing lots of hearts and thumbs ups, thumbs ups and hearts. And if you're here with us live tonight, there's a little thing down here. You can go tick, 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 and you can hit the hearts and you can hit the thumbs ups and Dale did both. So if you do, if you attended a physical workshop, it's a, it's a thumbs up in case you're new with us. And if you attended with us here last week or if you did both, then just do a heart. And if you're watching later, so if you're not here with us live or if you can't figure out how to do the heart or the thumbs ups, you can always do the emojis. So you can see, you know, Sandra, Sandra Joyce and Lynn did that. They just did the little thumbs up emoji and did a heart with it. So I'm just curious, Sandra, did you do blue hearts because you like blue or did you do blue because you are on team blue for WW My Way? And Joyce and Lynn, I have the same question. So just curious. I always do purple hearts because I like, because purple is my favorite color, not because I'm on team purple. <laughs> so anyway, just curious about that. Hello, Marlene from Florida. So last week was chat number 162. Oh, and Patricia did both. Last week was chat number 162, and we were talking about thinking outside the scale. So last week, yeah, and Alicia is team blue, okay. So, and Joyce is team purple. So, okay, so you all are color matching your, color matching your um, hearts. And, oh, let's see, Dale said, I told your WW meeting about your live videos and gave out your website. You may get some newbies. Well, thank you from Calgary. Yeah, that is awesome. Thank you very much. And Sandra's team blue and Lynn's team purple. Teresa's here and on green and team green. And Gail says, okay, so don't make fun of me, Gail. I'm going to try. Gail says, bonjour de, uh, de Quebec. Is that right? Bonjour de Quebec. Quebec? No, it's Quebec, right? If I'm saying it in French, if I'm parlez vous français, then I say bonjour de Quebec. Is that correct? I hope. Hopefully, hopefully. And hello, Sandra from Naperville, um, Illinois. How are things going up there? So hopefully I said that correctly. 
So the, Can the Canada Pavilion at Epcot's one of my favorites. <laughs> and I've been to Canada one time, one time. So I'm obsessed with it, but I've been to it one time and we barely passed over the border. I mean, like barely passed over. Anyway, I would love to go back again. Okay. So last week is um, chat number one six was chat number 162 and it was think outside the scale. So I just want to remind you all again this week, we talked about it a lot last week, but the scale does not define you. So I know everybody wants to see a good loss and everybody wants to know, um, you know, that their numbers are going down, um, but there are so many other things, so many other things that define how you're doing, you know, besides just the scale, you know, and here were three of my favorites. So you all had lots, you all had lots of good ones, but we just did a hashtag NSV. So it was um, non-scale victories. So it's victories that have nothing to do with the scale. So hashtag NSV was your homework for last week. And um, these were three of my favorites, lots of good ones, lots of good ones. Um, Michelle changed departments at work and at her company and so and she didn't see some of her co-workers you know for for a while some of them she hadn't seen in months and she ran into one of them and um hello carla she ran into one of them and he didn't recognize her so she was kind of messing around with him you know kidding around with him and he was like who are you he didn't recognize her so that is definitely definitely a non-scale victory oh i forgot to give you all your bravo stickers first bravo stickers for everybody who attended a workshop last week or attended here with us sorry I'll give you out extra ones because I forgot to give them out. Um, but Michelle gets an extra Bravo sticker for that. Kimberly has blown past her goal of drinking 100 ounces of water a day. And she said there have been a few days she's been, you know, trying to get the last little bit in, last little bit in at bedtime, but 100 ounces of water every day. And she made it through the entire month of February. I think it was February the 3rd was when she started. It was like the 3rd. Through the, through the 28th, today is March the 1st, not March the 2nd, Kelly, except for Sue, who's already in March the 2nd, um, but she blew past it. So that, wow, I mean, 100 ounces a day. So I'm gonna say that that's gonna help with her exercise too. Hello, Stacy, because she's gonna be running to the potty. Yeah, so that'll help with her exercises and some squats. Hmm, too. Okay, and then Teresa went for the dreaded annual doctor's appointment, you know, that dreaded annual checkup. You know, most of the time when you go um, for those checkups, so for years when I would go to that checkup, um, and it was with my sleep doctor, he would say, um, oh, it was Kimberly, it was February the 1st to the 29th. Oh, that's true, because it was 29 days, yeah. Good job again, Kimberly. Um, but I would go for years and he would say, and every year for years, he would say, I thought we talked about losing weight. And I would say, well, we talked about it, you know, but it's always good to get that good report. So Teresa went for her, for her annual checkup and her BMI was 23, 23. Her weight range was normal. Her blood pressure was 99 over 54. Now she's a runner, so don't anybody panic that her blood pressure is so low. But her, and I forget what her resting heart rate was, but it was awesome too. But she is a runner. And so her blood pressure was 99 over 54. She's 61 years old, 61 years young, and she is on no medications. Um, and she said her doctor said the only abnormality that she had is that she is not in his normal patient population. Okay, if that's not an NSV, I don't know what is. So no matter what the scale said this week, no matter what it said, um, Kim, uh, Michelle, Kimberly, and Teresa, yeah, you all definitely had victories, and a lot, a lot of the rest of you all did too. Teresa, though, quoted, um, and, and this is an unknown source. She's she couldn't remember who it came from, and I have no idea who it came from. But I thought this was exactly right. Teresa um, credited an unknown source and from a quote from years ago that said, "Genetics loads the gun, and you pull the trigger." That is so true. That is so true. So you know, our genetics define a small part of who we are, but we're the ones that pull the trigger. We actually talked about that in Sunday school this morning, you know, saying, well, everybody in my family's sick, so I guess I'll be sick too, or I'm old, so I guess I'm just going to get old and sick and die, or, you know, whatever. It doesn't have to be that way. So bravo, you ladies. You all nailed it. And yes, Teresa, it is you. So bravo, ladies. You all nailed it. Um, and everybody who did their homework this week, awesome good job good job hello maria um this week though 
we're talking about, this is chat number 163, and it is make activity stick. So I want to know who has an activity that they hate. They absolutely hate. Hello, Shanna. Who has an activity that they hate? So let me see a hand. Let me see a thumbs up. So who's got one that you hate? And then give us a shout out as to what it is. So mine is running. Can't stand it. Not going to do it won't be doing it. You all will never see me running. If I, if I have to see, oh, and Carla says she took her measurements today and started a paper log of, of her goals. That is awesome. And um, that's another good one. So you all will never see me running unless there's somebody chasing me. So yeah, that's the only time you're going to see me running. Dale hates squats. I must not be doing them right because I, because I don't mind them. Just kidding. Um, Rosie doesn't want to do weights. Betty hates steps. Teresa hates the treadmill, but she loves to run outside. Yeah, see, Teresa, I could never, I could stand there and cheer you on. I could cheer you on, but I would never be running with you. Never, never. Sherry doesn't jump or run. Um, Joyce doesn't like walking. She finds it boring. See, that's my, that's my preferred one. Rosie doesn't like planks. Marianne also does not like running. Um, yeah, and Lynn says, if you see me running, it's because someone is after me. That's exactly right, Lynn. That's me. That's me, me too. And Kimberly wants to know if meal prepping is an activity. <laughs> because that's her pick for the thing she doesn't like to do. How funny. Pamela's running. Debbie's jumping, jumping jacks. I forgot about that one. Sandy hates the climber. Ooh, Mary said burpees. I forgot about those. Michelle said hate to vacuum. Sue said floor, mop floor mopping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Sandra says Stairmaster. It's hard to do. Carol Lou says sit-ups. I'm pretty good at sit-ups, actually. Loretta says can't do squats or her and her knees are horrible. Mm -hmm. She needs a replacement. She does do the bike, though. And Irma says no treadmill. Okay. So, we all have activities that we hate, right? Okay. Just because we have activities that we hate doesn't mean that we shouldn't do any activities, okay? So, we've got to find something that we that we love. So I'm going to butcher an old saying. Um, so, you know, the, you know, the old saying, you know, if you do what you love or if you love what you do, wait, do what you love and you'll love what you do or I don't know, something like that. So I was sitting thinking about this this morning and I thought, you know, if you move how you love, then you'll, you'll, then you will love to move. So if you, if you move how you love, then you will love to move. So for me, it's walking or swimming. I do really enjoy swimming, um, but I love to walk and I love to walk with a buddy. So since I move how I love, since I love walking and I move how I love, then I love to move. So I miss it. So I'm already dreading tomorrow because it looks like it's going to rain again. And Karen and I got to walk today because the sun was out. We did not get to walk last Monday and we did not get to walk Thursday and I miss it. So when we don't get to walk, I, I actually do miss it. But walking is the one that I love. So you've got to find what you love. And they tell us in our weekly, and this is your weekly this week, in case you didn't grab one, but they tell us in our weekly, and just by the way, the Greek salad kebabs for this week look amazing. They look so good, and I meant to actually make those this week, but I got carried away with this other stuff. Um, but they tell us in our weekly this week that our approach to physical activity is simple. If you enjoy it, you will do it more. Exactly, exactly. And Carol Lou just said she loves dancing. So you know what? She's gonna, she likes doing aerobic videos because she loves to dance. Um, the more you do it, the more skills you'll develop and the more confident you'll feel, which will make you want to keep doing it. Hello, habit loop. So, you know, just because you don't think you're going to like it, you might want to try it. Like, I didn't think I was going to like the elliptical when Casey and I started doing it. Um, and then she showed me how to watch TV while I was doing it. She, you know, she didn't laugh at me when the first time I could only do it for four minutes. And then I got up to six minutes. Well, the last time that we got to go to Planet Fitness, I think I was up to like 20 minutes and I wasn't dying. And I actually was kind of, you know, kind of enjoying it. But they remind us to be realistic, to pick activities that we think we might actually do and enjoy. And it says, if you hate to run, training for a 5K probably isn't your thing. Yeah, so that would be me. Try temptation bun temptation bundling. So this was a new concept for me. They said die if you're dying to bin binge watch the latest streaming series, save it for your treadmill or for something else that you can do, some other workout that you can do while you, you know, while you are um 
you know, watching it while you're binge watching it. Um, and then you need to find some fun in it. So if it's something that you can do with a friend or if it's something that you can find fun, like the dancing, you know, like biking outdoors, like running outdoors, you know, something like that. Um, you know, if it's more fun, you know, then you'll, you know, you're more likely to do it. And the fourth one is to end on a high note. So if some parts of the activity were tough, um, you could end it with something, you know, that's a high note that does not mean to go out for ice cream. So that doesn't mean run and then run to the, you know, run to the ice cream store. Hello, Mary. Um, you know, it's ending on a high note, you know, like some stretching, you know, or do a cool down, you know, or just celebrate, you know, a non-food, you know, celebration. And then fifth is to celebrate your progress. So if you made it to yoga twice this week, nice, track it, write it down, put stickers on it, you know, um, download the our Bravo stickers and put a Bravo sticker on your page, you know, because you did that. So you can do that. You can also join groups on Connect um for you know four different kinds of activities there's all different ones you know there's yoga groups and running groups and you know all different kinds of things so if you'll find an activity you know and an activity doesn't have to be you know something crazy you know if you'll just start small you know and we talk we do talk about this all the time you know teresa is already a runner she's already a runner and she runs in marathons teresa how many marathons have you done did you do last year so i lost track and i think you've already done You've already done one this year, right? Um, so if you think that running might be for you, you would not jump up and go run necessarily with Teresa because she has been doing this for a while. And, um, yeah, and Debbie says, walk to the ice cream store. That's my favorite type. Um, but you wouldn't jump up and run, with, you know, and just go running with Teresa. First of all, she's going to, she's going to, you know, smoke the pants off of you because she's been, she's been doing this for so long. And obviously, you know, she's doing it well. Um, but you have to start with something small. And if you have had no physical activity, you know, so for those of you who've had knee replacements, hip replacements, um, you just haven't had any activity. You're just getting started. If you're just starting and you haven't had any kind of, you know, activity, any kind of physical activity, don't kill yourself. See, like Joyce loves jazzercise and she goes five to six days a week. She loves the music and she loves the group class. That is awesome. But if you tried to go with Joyce your first week, hello Haley, if you tried to go with Joyce your first week, you're probably not going to stick with it because you can't go from zero to five to six days, you know, just like that. Just like I was talking about with the elliptical. So I found six, eight, sorry, eight, six, eight, eight, six, eight, eight things that you can do. Even if you are a seasoned exerciser like Teresa is, um, I found eight things that you can do if you're just starting out, if you're just looking for something quick to do, if you're just looking for something fun to do, you know, with the kids or the grandkids or your spouse or your significant other or people at work or whatever, you know, I found eight things that you can do for just 15 minutes that, that earn one activity point. And so if you did three of these throughout the day, that would be three activity points. And remember, we talked about a couple of chats ago, we were talking about getting up and moving and that sitting is the new smoking. So if you'll get up a couple of times a day and just move a little bit, that's so much better for you than, you know, trying to, you know, go do something, you know, overly strenuous, you know, for an hour if you're not used to it. Okay, so here are eight things. And I did, so today's, today's hashtag is hashtag 15 men fit fun. So it's like, it's 15 men fit fun, M-I-N-F-I-T-F-U-N, but like 15 minute fit fun. Okay, so all of these 15 minutes earns you one fit point, bowling or skee ball. I love bowling. Love, love, love bowling. Yeah. And I love ski ball and I'm pretty darn good at it. And maybe I'm good at it because I'm good at bowling. I don't know. Don't know. But I usually win something if I do ski ball. But if you play ski ball or bowl for 15 minutes, you've earned one activity point. How fun is that? And that's something that you could do with a group. So that would be super fun to do. 15 minutes of ping pong. If you are lucky enough to have a ping pong table, I know like some companies have them in their break, room, break rooms. Um, some people have them in their rec rooms at home. Do we even still call them rec rooms? I don't know. Am I showing my age? Um, but 15 minutes of playing ping pong. Gosh, and we could fit a ping pong table upstairs. Hmm. You might want to think about that. Anyway, 15 minutes of ping pong. One activity point. And plus, you'd be off of your bottom for 15 minutes. 15 minute dog walk. Okay, let's face it. You're going to get one activity point out of that. 
your doggy's going to love you. So your best furry friend is going to love you for taking him or her for a 15 minute walk. You know, I've gotten really bad here lately about just running Dusty out to the bare minimum, you know, okay, buddy, we can go right there. You got to pee and we got to right back in. So I've been trying to take him farther and farther, you know, away because just, it's just 15 minutes. So 15 minutes earns you one fit point and your doggy's going to love you for it. 15 minutes of dancing. So who who was my dancer here just a few minutes ago? Was it Joyce? Who was it that said they love to dance so much? So 15 minutes of dancing with your spouse, um, with your kids, with your grandkids. Um, so tomorrow, so if Alyssa and I, instead of just listening to all the Frozen songs while we sit on the couch, if we actually get up and dance to them for 15 minutes, I'm gonna earn a fit point. We're gonna have a good time. Um, I'm gonna get my rear end off the couch, you know, and I'm gonna earn a fit point doing it. Oh no, and Debbie says, how many fit points does she get if she has to carry the dog? Hmm, I don't know. I don't know if you get any extra fit points, but you get some mercy points or something. I don't know, you get some brownie points for that. Um, okay, 15 minutes of miniature golf. Oh, it was Carol, yeah, Carol likes to dance. So 15 minutes of miniature golf, that would be such a fun team building thing from work. So you could tell everybody, hey, we need to do some team building there's a miniature golf here it's called putt putt i don't know what it's called everywhere but you know there's a miniature golf um place you know place down here you know we could do some team building um it would be a great place to get the kids out you know and burn up some you know burn up some energy if they're driving you crazy but 15 minutes 15 minutes of miniature golf earns you one fit point yeah and it's fun so it's you know it's totally fun 15 minutes of wee sports so, and I dare you to stop. So I dare you to stop at 15 minutes. So back when we had, we, we had Wii Sports and Wii Fit and, you know, Wii, 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 whatever, you know, and it's been years ago, but that was hard to stop. Um, so much fun. Um, it's fun. It's fun and it's activity. So 15 minutes of Wii Sports does also earn you one fit point and it earns you a whole lot of fun. It earns you a whole lot of fun with your family. Um, if you have... Um, or we're still talking about carrying the dog. If you have a trampoline out back, like if you, you know, have kids and you've got a trampoline out back, or if you have a little mini trampoline at work or something, 15 minutes of jumping on the trampoline, one fit point, you know, and who doesn't like to jump on a trampoline? It's so much fun. Um, so that would be a great idea. And the last one is 15 minutes of some form of paddle boating. So like if you, you know, so we're getting ready to have a lot of outdoor activities, you know, here in East Tennessee, cause the, I think the weather is gonna warm up, you know, super quick. So, you know, if you want to, you know, if you were doing like a little canoe, um, if you were in one of the little boats where it's just you and maybe another person and you're just doing the little pedals, um, you know, something like that. So 15 minutes in some kind of, you know, some kind of a little paddle boat, um, and you don't have to go, you know, spend a whole lot of money and do, you know, anything extravagant to do in a paddle boat. But yeah, but you earn a fit point just doing that, you know. And how much fun is that just to paddle around, paddle around on the lake or in the little area, you know, little area that you're at. So 15 minutes earns you a fit point. So your homework for this week is going to be something that's 15 minutes of 15 minute fit fun. So I want you to find something, something that you can do for 15 minutes that will earn you a fit point. And I'm talking a fun something. It'll earn you one fit point. I'm not saying jump up and go run. I'm saying something fun for 15 minutes. So, oh my gosh, Debbie says by midweek it'll be the 90s in Central Florida. Good Lord. So, okay. So like Orlando Debbie, for example, she could go walk with our walking at Disney group and they could go walking for 15 minutes and that would be her 15 minute fit fun. But your homework is it's hashtag 15 men fit fun. So it's, it's a hashtag and then 15 M I N F I T F U N. And maybe somebody will post it so that y'all can see what to post, but don't forget to tag me on Instagram. It's at, if you have an egg here on the Facebook page. It's also at, if you have an egg, if you are doing this over in our closed Facebook group, tag at Kelly Green Milligan. And if you are tagging me on Connect, it is at Scrap and Stamp 2, S-C-R-A-P-N-S-T-A-M-P, and the number two. And if you were just commenting, um, just comment, because I'll see it. But it's hashtag, it's hashtag 15 men fit fun. That's gonna be our homework for this week. And remember, you get extra Bravo stickers if you do your homework. Plus, you'll get an extra 
I, yes, thank you, Lynn. That's exactly right. Lynn did it exactly right. 15 men fit then. That's exactly right, Lynn. So if y'all just copy what Lynn put, you will be right on the money. Um, but yeah, so you get an extra Bravo sticker and you get to do something fun. You get to do something super fun. Okay, so we're going to take a quick break and then I'm going to show you what I made for the second half. Does everybody understand what your homework is? Um, our second half is going to be lots and lots and lots of food again. I actually made four things and yes carol it's exactly right i'm actually made four things so we're going to run through them pretty quick um i will not be able to tell you all all of the ingredients while we are running through them so so sorry only one of them is already posted on the blog it's just www.ifyouhaveanegg.com oh and joni just finished a mile walking while she was listening to us there you go so you've already got your 15 minute fit fun um but uh yeah so i've got planned in my scheduler i've planned in my scheduler one recipe is already posted i've got the second one already planned for tomorrow and then the next two planned for the next two days after that so jessica and casey continue to make it a little bit easier for me to get these posted so fingers crossed that will happen soon but i just realized while we're taking our break in between the first and the second part it is time for some water where's barbara i did not see barbara come in tonight and I don't have water tonight. I have, I have, I'm up to here. I'm up to here in water today. So I've switched to unsweet tea. Hmm. And apparently we have a helicopter outside. But where is Barbara? So where is Barbara? I think I spelled that right. Okay. Well, while we wait for Barbara to tell everybody it's time for water, we are back, and this is part two of chat number 163, Make Activity Stick. So, first part, we talked about activity. This part, the second half, for our extra credit, we are going to talk about cauliflower rice. So, it's been around for a while. Um, you used to have to rice your own cauliflower. Um, so I know like my Sunday school teacher, she was still trying to do it herself. You can still do it yourself. Um, you can do it in a food processor. You can do it with a cheese grater. Um, I am so sorry. I do not have time in my life to rice my own cauliflower. Excuse me. So I am purchasing it. Um, Popcorn Karen just posted a few minutes ago that she prefers the cauliflower rice um, from Trader Joe's. She said it was more the consistency of actual rice, and I think she said it's not as wet. Is that right? If you're still here, Popcorn Karen, let us know if that is correct. Um, I'm an, I guess I'm an equal opportunity um, rice cauliflower eater, but I haven't been super adventurous with it. So, one of the girls in our physical workshop, in our physical meeting, her name is Haley, and Haley was talking to us about um, uh, fried rice, about cauliflower fried rice. And, um, and Debbie, I don't know. I do not know. Ooh, Sandra puts it in her. So Debbie wants to know why you would rice your own. I don't know. I, I think she just didn't know any better. And she probably is not listening to this. They're like 76, 77 years old. So I think she thought she had to. Um, and Sandra says she puts it in her turkey chili. Yum, that sounds so good. But Haley kept talking about um, fried rice. So Haley is in our physical group. And she's, on, she's doing purple. And she is rocking it. I mean, she is doing so well. She's doing so well. So um, I got some and I made it because she kept talking about it, you know, and I, and I wanted some. So I made some. The cauliflower rice, the fried rice recipe is already on the blog. It's www.ifyouhaveanegg.com. But I'm going to show you four things, including the fried rice that you can make with it. And again, we're going to blow through these in the 20 seven minutes that we have left so i won't be able to tell you all the ingredients so i'm going to go ahead and apologize now if i'm talking quickly um i will get these posted this week again cauliflower rice the cauliflower fried rice is already posted www.ifyouhaveanegg.com and it should be the very last thing um that was posted so first thing super simple super super simple um and this made a whole lot of sense we we used to eat this a lot um put it in um uh burrito like uh, like put it in with a burrito put it in with fajitas put it in with um like different layered things you know if we were going to have you know some kind of you know mexican or whatever but we've stopped eating it because rice had so many points you know so many points for us 
So this is just Spanish rice. So I don't know who, I don't know how many of you all actually know what Spanish rice is. Um, it is, I don't even know why it's called Spanish rice because there's not really anything Spanish about it. Um, so it, but this is made with the cauliflower rice instead of, um, ooh, wait, Dale made cauliflower rice tonight. She mixed it with ground chicken, asparagus, peas, corn, and some spices. Mm, that sounds good. So this is just rice to go with your other Mexican things. And it doesn't have to be Mexican because there, there are no Mexican spices in here. Hello, Titters. How are you? I haven't talked to you in a while. Are you doing okay? Um, so I don't know why it's called Spanish rice. No idea. But so this is cauliflower rice. And when you make Spanish rice, it does have garlic in it. It does have onions in it. It has um, tomatoes, or you can just use tomato paste. Um, and then when it is, um, so when you're making it as rice, you're, um, I think, and it does have um, some, I put vegetable broth in it instead of, you can use chicken broth or beef, beef broth, but I just put um, vegetable broth in it. And it is vegetarian. The way I made it, I believe it is also vegan. Um, but it's definitely meatless, but this is a good base for a lot of different recipes. Um, we're going to try it though, because it is cauliflower rice instead of, instead of being made out of regular rice. And so we're going to see if it tastes just like regular Spanish rice. Mm -hmm. And it does. It tastes just like Spanish rice. It does not taste like cauliflower it's got the right consistency. It tastes just like it. So this is a recipe that I'll post later in the week. It's super simple to make. You make it in one pot. Um, it will probably have, because of the oil that I used in it, maybe a point, maybe a point, unless it's a big serving. Um, but oh, and Lynn says most of it there has jalapeno in it. Hmm. Guess what I may be adding to this. But this, though, I'm going to use to make like a Mexican, um, like a little Mexican casserole. So this will be one layer of the casserole and then it'll have black beans. And I haven't decided yet whether or not it's going to have chicken, but it'll have black beans. And then it'll have, um, I have some more of the Pico, uh, Pico. It'll have that on there and then cheese, and then that'll get baked. So this will be the base for it, but we're not really adding any points by using this for the base instead of using rice for the base. Okay. So that's one thing. Next thing, this is this is just like a it's like macaroni and cheese so i basically took the cauliflower rice and i will post this as a recipe but i took the cauliflower rice and boiled it just like you would boil pasta noodles you don't have to do it for as long though because it's you know because it's cauliflower rice and you don't have to add as much water because you're not you're not trying to boil noodles and get them you know get a dried noodle to expand um, but then I mixed in, um, this has non-fat Greek yogurt mixed in. It also has fat-free ricotta cheese mixed in, and it has Velveeta shredded cheese. And if you don't have Velveeta shredded cheese in your area, I'm so sorry because it is Velveeta. So if you like Velveeta cheese, and I know if Karen's watching, she says Velveeta is not cheese, whatever. I know it's not cheese, Velveeta cheese product, but it melts so good. And if you've never had it, you must try it because it melts so good. This makes like the best queso ever. But then after that, then I put it all, you know, I put it in this pan. So that's about two cups of cauliflower rice, cauliflower rice and it has about, um, let me see, it's two cups of cauliflower rice. It has a half, let me think, a fourth of a cup of fat-free ricotta, a fourth of a cup of the non-fat Greek yogurt, and a half a cup of the um, shredded Velveeta put all that in that pan, you know, mix it together. And then I put it in this, I sprayed this a little bit um, with nonstick spray or with your Evo sprayer and, you know, just spray it a little bit, put that in there and kind of patted it down a little bit. And then I put um, panko crumbs on top and I put some of the Dax, um, everything but the bagel. It's everything but the salt is theirs. And you can use the everything but the bagel mix just because it has a little bit of a garlic, you know, taste to it and it's really good. And then I cooked this on 350 um, for uh, for 30 minutes so that it would be like a baked macaroni and cheese and so let's put a little bit out on this plate and see how it turned out now when it was warm 
when it was still warm, it looked even better. Of course, we've been chatting for a few minutes, so it is no longer that warm. But you can use this. This makes a good little side dish. Um, it's going to be more like it's going to be more like a cheesy rice, even though I'm calling it macaroni and cheese. It's going to be more like a cheesy rice because the rice, when you do it like this, has more of the consistency of like risotto. So, and that would be good too. Mm, risotto would be good. So this one's just a very cheesy, and you you know, and then you bake it so that it's like baked macaroni and cheese. Let's see how this one is. Mm, so cheesy. That would be good with some onion in it too. And Melissa wants to know what you would serve with baked chicken or something like that. Yes, this is delicious by itself. This would actually, believe it or not, be good like as a side like for eggs but yes it would be good with some baked chicken it would be good with um that man's turkey tenderloin um it would be good this would be good with something if you serve green beans with it but it's just a cheesy casserole so it's like making a cheesy rice casserole um yeah so that was super good that one so that one's super easy i made all of this after karen and i got back from walking well one thing i didn't because it was i already had it going because it was in a crock pot but all of this so everything got made in in two hours or less okay so the next one's a little bit more complicated so i'm going to talk more slowly so the next one is the cauliflower fried rice um oh yeah vicky said pork oh yeah pork chops that man's pork chops which is also on the blog so yeah vicky said pork chops and broccoli that would be good and Teresa said yes the turkey tenderloin so this would be good with the that man's pork chops or that man's turkey tenderloin and those are both already on the blog it's www.ifyouhaveanegg.com and you can just search that man if you search that man any of the that man stuff would be really good that would be really good with this okay so this next one's a little bit more complicated so i'm going to talk a little bit slower and i'm going to explain a little more in detail okay so this is the cauliflower fried rice so the base of this is cauliflower fried rice um, which is cauliflower rice. So it's already riced cauliflower. Um, and I think, I think we're not allowed to call it cauliflower rice because I think the rice community had a meltdown because it was being called cauliflower rice. So I think now you have to call it riced cauliflower, whatever. Anyway, I've got more important things to do than to worry about people's, the rice community's feelings being hurt. But anyway, Okay, so this was call it riced cauliflower. Um, it does have sesame oil in it. I had a question today about what if you don't like sesame oil. I guess just use olive oil. I don't know. I mean, I love sesame oil. I love it. Um, oh, and Melissa wants to know if I had the bag the cauliflower came in. Okay, hold on just a second. I got to go dig it out. Now this is the industrial size bag because i was making so much today it comes in smaller bags than this but this is green giant rice veggies cauliflower so it does come in smaller bags than this but i was making four things so i needed the ginormous bag so that is what that looks like um but that's the only ingredient that's in the riced cauliflower is just the cauliflower you can get it cauliflower you can get it cauliflower and broccoli you can get um cauliflower and peas and carrots you can get some of seasoning in them so make sure though that if you're going to count the rice cauliflower part as zero points that you get just the rice cauliflower not the one with the seasoning or check the points okay so anyway so it has this does have this recipe is already on the blog it's already on www.ifyouhaveanegg.com and it is rice cauliflower sesame oil garlic um it does have a little bit of peas and carrots in it. It has egg in it. So it has egg, one egg and um, a fourth of a cup of egg whites. And the blog will tell you how to, you know, how to fix that. But to make it like actual um, fried rice. So actual fried rice has, you know, kind of scrambled eggs, you know, scrambled up in it. It has scallions in it. It has onions in it. Um, oh, that's, this is the part. This is why I'm listing every single thing. 
and I use Bragg liquid aminos. So I got a ton of questions about, do you have to use soy sauce, sauce or not? Okay, I never said use soy sauce because I don't use soy sauce. If I need something that tastes like soy sauce, I use Bragg liquid aminos. Um, these are so much better for you. Um, they, it is a natural soy sauce alternative and it's made from soy protein. Um, it does have a little bit of a salty taste to it. It is, um, it's healthier for um, vegetarian, you know, healthy recipes, but it has no preservatives, no alcohol, not fermented. It's gluten free and it contains the following 16 amino acids that I'm not going to read. It has 16 amino acids though, and it is non-GMO. So this is what I use instead of soy sauce. So to the person who didn't like, who doesn't like sesame oil and who doesn't like soy sauce, sorry, you're just gonna have to make it with olive oil and no liquid aminos, I guess. But I mean, I'd say try it because these are so good. They're so good. And Betty says she likes the Bragg liquid aminos. I put these in my green beans too. Um, really, really good. It gives it kind of a smoky flavor too. So it's really good as a soy sauce alternative. It's a good as a Worcestershire sauce alternative. Um, but I love it. So this is what I'm using when I say Bragg liquid aminos. And if you can't find it, if you go to, if you have an egg.com and if you go to, I think if you go to the shop, then, um, Jessica has listed a lot of my recommendations, like things that you can get on Amazon. So, I mean, if you want to order it from Amazon, you, you know, you can. Um, I love them. Oh, that was it. I forgot. One of the things that was in this, this does have Bragg Nutritional Yeast in it. It does have Bragg Nutritional Yeast in it. Okay, and Teresa wants to know if it has sodium. It does. It, that's why I said it has a salty flavor. It has 320 milligrams of sodium. Um, but the ingredients are vegetable protein from non-GMO soybeans and purified water. But it has, so it has naturally occurring sodium. So they have not added any salt to it, but it is naturally occurring, you know, sodium. I mean, it has a little bit of a salty taste. Okay, so all of that. So you make the cauliflower fried rice and you go, um, so you go to, if you have an egg.com today, it's the top recipe. It's the very today on March the 1st, 2020. It is the top recipe tomorrow. Hopefully it won't be the top recipe because, or the last one done, because hopefully I'll be getting one of these other three put in. Um, and then the next day and the next day and the next day that it'll go back down. Um, and so you go ahead and make that. But then what I have on top of this is if you want to, if you want to make this a vegetarian meal, it's not vegan because it has an egg in it, okay? So anybody who's thinking, oh, it's gonna be vegan, it is not. It is a meatless meal, it is a vegetarian meal, but it is not vegan because it does have an egg in it and it has egg whites in it. So I use the Gardein Porkless, the sweet and sour porkless bites, and I've divided it up into three. So this recipe, the recipe for the um, um, cauliflower fried rice, cauliflower fried rice it's six servings but i've divided mine into three servings so that makes it two smart points because i did only three servings instead of the six servings that it comes out to then the gardein porkless bites without the sauce it is two smart points for the for the porkless bites and then the sauce i think at if you divide that into thirds and then the sauce i think adds another point or two so i've got like four to five points for all of this for this whole cute little belt and look look at that little cutie's face i got this at sunrise market here in knoxville but anyway they have all kinds of cute little asian bowls like this but so that is this big bowl it's a pretty good size bowl of call of my cauliflower fried rice on if you have an egg.com and the gardein porkless um porkless bites, sweet and sour porkless bites with the sauce and some scallions and i'm so ready to try this so it smelled so good. I'm gonna try and cut this in the porkless bite in half though. I should have done that first. Cause I, don't, I know y'all don't wanna watch me eat an entire bite of that. But for those of you who want to try something meatless and you're scared to, I'm telling you, these, you would never know. You would never know that they were not pork. 
Okay, so I got on my fork, because I'm not brave enough to eat with chopsticks in front of you all. So on my fork, I have some cauliflower fried rice, and I have a half of one of the Gardein sweet and sour porkless bites, and let's see how that tastes. Mm. <laughs> I seriously just want to say, go ahead and say good night and go eat this. That is so good. Oh my gosh, that's good. Okay, you're definitely going to want to try that one. Definitely going to want to try that one. It has a few scallions on top. Oh, and I've sprinkled just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of tuxedo sesame seeds on there just to make it look pretty. Can you see them? The little black and white, little black and white sesame seeds. Yeah, so for like four or five points, so for like four or five points, this whole bowl, gosh, that's good. And then I made two more, I made two more servings of it and I put them in um, the... Put them in the meal prep haven um, and I'm gonna freeze them so that I have them as backup for work my goal this week for me my goal for me this week is to make five or six freezer meals so like um, like TV dinners you know like they used to be but so I've got two of these already and I'm gonna get the Annie Chung's um, egg rolls and he and you know and put those and put those right here and then I'll leave this blank, even though I'm putting them in the freezer, because I'll probably eat them with some kind of fruit, you know, when it's time to eat them. But, so that's, you know, four to five points. So good. I'm seriously, seriously considering just telling y'all good night. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to. Okay. The last one. So, and I think we can get this one covered in the nine minutes that we have left. Uh, the last, gosh, I want another bite of that. That's so good. Anyway. So, the one that we have left. This is something that my mom used to make all the time so she used to make this all the time oh yeah wait alicia wrote down the ingredients or she just wrote down the ingredients and oh and she bought how did you buy these at the store today were you like channeling me or something you knew to pick these up um and she's gonna make that her meatless monday dinner that is awesome yeah i have a feeling we'll be having that too or this other one um but my mom used to make this all the time and i honestly cannot remember I can't remember if she made it in a crock pot. I mean, this was, I'm talking like eons ago, like before she became vegan, when we were growing up, you know, this was, I think a cheap meal, you know, for her to make. Um, I cannot remember if she made it in a Dutch oven or I don't think she had a crock pot. I really just don't think she had a crock pot. I'm thinking it was a Dutch oven. And I'm sorry, Pam wants to know where I got the pork bites. So I bought them at Publix today, but here in Knoxville, we have them at Publix, Kroger, um, Ingles has a lot of the Gardein stuff, but I don't know if they have the pork bites or not. I have not checked Food City um, here in Knoxville, but for sure in Knoxville, so I don't know where you live, but for sure in Knoxville, Publix and Kroger for sure ha has these. Um, but anyway, so I don't know if she, I guess she did it in, in a Dutch oven. Well, I had to do it in the crock pot because I don't have a Dutch oven. Um, I thought about doing it in the can cooker, and the next time I make it, I might try it in the can cooker just to see how it turns out. But since I knew for sure it was going to come out okay, and tedders, are you, porkless bites, they're in the freezer section. So they're frozen. Frozen and, um, oh, and Alicia says they have them at Walmart in North Idaho. Okay. Well, y'all, since I don't go to Walmart, I never thought to check, never thought to check there. But yeah, so maybe Walmart too. Okay. So this one, again, I did the crock pot. My mom used to make it all the time. Um, Turn that off. So my mom used to make it all the time, um, but I knew that it would turn out good in the crock pot. So I've made it before with rice, and I just and I thought since I had this whole rice cauliflower theme going on, I thought, hmm, you know, I wonder if I can go ahead and make that with riced cauliflower too. And guess what? It turned out great. And yes, Tedders, it really does taste like pork. I mean, it's well. Hold on. Let me show you the middle of this one. Let me show you the inside of this one. Actually, this is just an, no, that's not the inside. This is an excuse to take another bite, and then I will show you this other food. So, gosh, I love them. 
that's the inside of one of the pork bites so it looks like pork it looks like pork and it tastes like pork and i mean it's not it's not super chewy like a pork chop it's like a super super tender pork chop no one would know if you didn't tell them it wasn't a pork chop they would never know and the sauce that comes on it is really good too okay so anyway this last one again my mom used to make it all the time i think it's because it was cheap you know because it was cheap and easy to make but i made it in the crock pot and this is rice cauliflower again and <coughs> what i did is i thawed the rice cauliflower i put it on the bottom layer um i made it like the bottom layer in my crock pot so it was two cups of rice cauliflower and so i put it all you know put it all over the whole that bottom layer then i um put about you know like a couple of tablespoons of water in there and i went ahead and turned the crock pot on low then i added diced onions and celery so it doesn't have to be onions and celery it can be onions and carrot i do recommend though that you if you can if you, if you make it with onions because it just helps since you're cooking it slow to bring all that flavor out so you can do onions and carrots you can do onions and potatoes if you want to and you can do different things but i did diced onions and celery and then i put that layer on there then i added lean um, round so round steak lean round steak and you need to trim the fat off of it if you do get if you do get some that has you know some fat on it because you're trying to make this as lean as you can so that it's not too many points so lean round steak i think was it's like an it's like a point per ounce so three ounces would be three points four ounces would be four points um, I'll go back and calculate that exactly for you when I post the recipe. But you put that on there and it's raw. And you can see it was cut into little, cut into these little strips. Um, A, so it'd be easier to get out. B, that's part of how you do this. And I'll tell you what it's called in a second. And has anybody ever made this? And do you know what it's called? Because I haven't said the name yet, I don't think. I don't think I've said the name yet. Because this is another one. I'm terribly confused as to why it's called this. Um and so then you put that on there and it's raw then you add you can add either tomato paste or you can do canned tomatoes and so i had some tomatoes um left from the spanish rice so i just used the rest of the can of tomatoes and poured that over the top of it um it does have some garlic and it has uh, more of the vegetable broth so i put that in there too and then you cover all that up so kind of smear the tomatoes out and you cover all that up and you let it cook in the crock pot you let it cook on low for six to eight hours well i didn't have six to eight hours so i had to put mine on high for about 30 45 minutes and then i turned it back on to low um, for four hours but does anybody know what this is called does anybody else's mom did anybody else's mom ever make this dish or do you make this dish does anybody know what it's called yes tedders is exactly right it's called swiss style steak and carol's exactly right swiss steak why is it called swiss steak somebody please explain that to me what does this have to do with switzerland what what is swiss about this but when my mom used to make it she would always serve it over rice so i did the rice cauliflower so that i could keep the points down to just the steak okay and since this is all cooked in the crock pot or you can cook it in a pressure cooker i'm sure you can cook it in a pressure cooker pretty sure my mom cooked hers in a dutch oven then you don't need to add any extra oil to it or anything but yeah swiss style steak I have no idea why it's called that but because you're putting it over the rice cauliflower you can keep the points super super low so that you can enjoy more steak okay so let me try it and let me see if it tastes like what my mom's did oh what did i do with my fork okay i'm gonna see if it tastes like my mom's old swiss style steak and again no idea why it's called that none Mm-hmm. It tastes exactly like it. I mean, exactly. 
you would have no clue, no clue that this wasn't rice underneath it. Thank you, Tedder. Tedder says these recipes are amazing, Kelly Green Million. Thank you. Yeah, and Betty cooks a lot in her crock pot, so she's gonna try it. So this is crazy yummy. It tastes exactly like my mom's Swiss doll steak. Um, and there's no rice in there. So I have saved all the points for the meat. So I'll get to have extra meat. Okay, so that is four recipes using rice cauliflower. Um, I hope you all will get the industrial size bag um, like I did. The um, cauliflower fried rice is already up on the blog. It's just www.ifyouhaveanegg.com. The others will be up there by the end of the week because again, Jessica and Casey have are saving me so much time and are helping me so much to get um, to get everything posted so that we can so that we can keep going. And thank you, Alicia. Alicia says, uh, "Great chat as usual. Thank you for the recipes. You're awesome. Thank you. No, you all are awesome for listening to me. Um, but I am going to try to see if I can get Dusty to come over here. First of all, he's going to think he's getting some of this. But second of y'all, y'all have to see this haircut, Dusty. Here, buddy." Don't forget to do your homework. So your homework is the hashtag 15 minute fit fun, 15 min fit fun. Don't forget that. And ooh, and Carol or Carla says the beef is called Sussex if you roll it or pound it. Hmm, awesome. Okay, come here, buddy. Okay, check out this stylish haircut. So we found out like four months after we check like oh it's the swissing okay vicky and carla both say that it's swiss because of the swissing process okay well that makes sense anyway we had to get him super super shaved <laughs> so he looks like a little tiny rat dog look he had to wear pajamas he had to wear pajamas because he has because he has so much less hair okay anyway y'all have a great week um try all of this it was super super yummy i bet you can guess which one i'm having for supper tonight we will definitely be having the Swiss style steak for um, for supper tomorrow night. But y'all have an amazing week. It's been so much fun to be here again. Thank you for letting me cook for you so that we have food for the rest of the week. Um, but y'all have a great week. And if you're watching this on YouTube, just go ahead and let that next video play. You know you want to watch it. If you have not subscribed yet, why haven't you subscribed? If you're watching this on YouTube or listening on YouTube, why haven't you subscribed? Go ahead and subscribe on YouTube and, and then click that little bell so that it'll let you know when the next video gets posted. And if you want to order one of our spread shirts, spread shirts, and Casey just added a new one that I'm going to have to get because it says hello and happy Sunday. If you want to get one of those or a coffee mug or something, they are right over here. But you all have an amazing night. Hope y'all have an even better week and I will see you next time. Good night. <laughs>